Hey everyone, it's Schmuckles. So the final piece of the Vecna D&D rumors for Chapter 32 were actually confirmed today by Behavior Interactive by the introduction of two new skins for Chapter 31. Recall that Gumpy said that the new killer for Chapter 31, which was unknown at the time, was going to be one guy and two girls. And this is actually what Behavior announced today on live stream. We treated the unknown like it could be any citizen of Greenville. So while the character's basic form may appear as male, we didn't limit ourselves to age or gender when it came to thinking about their cosmetics. We wanted to play with that sort of analog horror th theme of finding horror in familiar things. So we turned it into a high school cheerleader <laughs> with the Greenville pep and Greenville cheer outfits, both rare, uh, for the Unknown Aberrations collection. Then we also turned it into a grandmother with the very rare eyeless woman outfit for the Shop Till You Drop collection. These are pretty much the skins that are available in the store right now too. We have a Greenville High School cheerleader as one of the skins on the unknown. And then we have the eyeless woman or like a granny skin that is also on the unknown too. The base kit skin for the unknown is a guy. So that's a guy and two girl skins, just like the leak said. And of course, she's our first unofficial goth character, which is so much fun. These two collections are two very different plays on that style. And it, how it, Sable makes it specifically her own. Just because she's a little goth, it doesn't mean that she needs to be terrifying. So it seems like the rest of the leaks are probably true as well. So Vecna from Dungeons and Dragons for the anniversary, and then some sort of Castlevania collaboration after that. I'm not quite sure if the Castlevania stuff is going to be a skin or if it's going to be a standalone DLC. It seemed like this person was alluding to the fact that it was going to be a DLC, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So now that it seems like a lot of the rumors are confirmed, I kind of wanted to go back to the previous video and correct some of the things that I was incorrect about. One of the big talking points from the last video in this series is when I said I wasn't sure if Behavior actually liked this comment before or after it was edited. This comment here was fully talking about the rumors and leaks that we've been talking about and it actually received a heart from Behavior. I actually checked this on Twitch the day of the video, but if you receive a heart from the creator of a video and you edit the comment, the heart actually goes away. This makes a lot of sense. So a creator doesn't actually heart something and then someone changes it to something absolutely insane. And then it looks like the person who posted the video liked the comment that's now absolutely insane after it's been edited. The point is that the Dead by Daylight account actually hardered this when the comment actually said this. If this person would have edited the comment after Behavior gave it a heart, it would actually remove the heart. Another thing too is Pat and Matthew Cote actually responded in the comment section of my video, so it's important to clarify the information that they're actually clarifying for us. There's actually no reason to believe that Matthew Cote or Pat are actually leaking anything. They're not really confirming or denying anything. Someone actually commented on my previous video and said, how did she get laid off if she's the wife of the DVD director? And Pat actually responded and said, just to clarify, I left not laid off behavior almost two to three years ago because I wanted to work on other games and gain new experiences. Someone also commented, bro, Pat hasn't been at behavior for over two years. She left in September of 2021. She's doing the same job at her current employer. So that's why she was still a community manager in December. And Pat commented, haha, I'm Pat. I can confirm that I left two years ago. So this actually means that one, my timeline speculation was completely off on when Pat was actually working at Dead by Daylight. Two, there's actually now no reason to believe that Pat actually knew anything about the upcoming collaborations. We'll actually build on this later in the video. And three, Pat is actually not leaking anything or really hinting at anything. She's just a fan of Castlevania and Dungeons and Dragons by coincidence. Pat responded to comments in the comment section of my video. I don't think I can actually pin comments that are responses to comments. So I pinned a comment myself as soon as I saw that Pat posted that on my video. And I said correction to the info and I actually clarified that she was not laid off by behavior and she left almost two to three years ago because she wanted to work on other games and gain new experience. Matthew Cote actually responded to this pinned comment and he said to add even more info, she does have Castlevania and D&D tattoos and we play D&D every week, so there. This actually is Matthew Cote's YouTube channel, so I actually went to the YouTube channel and this actually fully, this definitely is Matthew Cote's YouTube channel. So chapter 31 was dropped today. It almost fully confirms the rumors with Vecna D&D and Castlevania being the next two licensed things in this game. So I just want to make something crystal clear. Matthew Cote and Pat are commenting on the comment section of these rumor videos to make clear that they're actually not leaking or hinting at licenses that are coming into Dead by Daylight. Pat has Castlevania and D&D tattoos, so these two are actually huge fans of both of those franchises. And anything they've ever said or done on Twitter appears to be for that reason and for that reason alone. At this point, it just seems like kind of a coincidence. It's actually not even known or can't even be proven if Pat actually knows about the next license deals in the game. And these facts and this information must be clarified now because it does seem like these leaks are actually true. Meaning that they're both big fans of the franchise and they're actually not really hinting or leaking anything. I do kind of fully buy that it was just a coincidence. I don't know if this is like a logical fallacy or sort of just like 2020 hindsight, but if we have really strong reason to believe that something is going to happen 
happen in the future, it's easier to go on Twitter and find things that actually look like they're hinting at things when they're actually not. There's a ton of developers with Twitter accounts that work at Behavior Interactive, and they're all fans of various horror franchises. But if we somehow get wind that a particular horror license is next in the game, we could probably go on Twitter and find devs that are actually fans of that franchise and kind of guess that they're hinting at the chapter when they're really not. And as a journalist and a news reporter who's looking for the truth and really not looking to get anybody in trouble, it's super important that I clarify this to my audience. And I feel like that they have to speak up in this situation because it's important that everyone knows these facts. So I just wanted to post a video today kind of clarifying that it seems like those leaks are real and that anything we might have seen on Twitter related to any of these devs is really just sort of a coincidence, even though it does seem like everything is true. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. That does it for this video. Goodbye.